Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week, guess what? We have more ice fishing to talk about, but there are some open water options now, and even some salt water options. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, I just want to remind you one more time that the Rat Swim Bait giveaway is still ongoing. It's going on until the first Tuesday in March. And, um, you know, I'll make one of these for you in whatever color you want. All you have to do is send me your favorite fishing photo, your favorite recent fishing photo. And uh, I'm going to go through them all. I'm going to pick my favorite. And whoever is crowned the favorite will earn one of these. Uh, the, the photos will be used in various places in the magazine and in this video as well. Uh, just really want to see what you guys are up to fishing in the wintertime. I'm going to try to keep these giveaways going for a while. Um, and I don't care if you get it, if you got the fish on your trip to Belize or if you caught it in, in the pond down the street from your house or if you went up to Maine and caught a small smelt at the smelt camp. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Just want to just want to see photos of you guys getting out there and catching fish. Uh, so, as I kind of mentioned in the intro, still a lot of ice fishing going on. There's going to be for some time. Um, up north, you know, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, Vermont, uh, upstate New York, there's lots and lots of safe ice. Very thick, you know, over a foot thick in most places. It's going to be there for a while. Um, stories that I'm hearing, you know, I had friends that were up bouncing around in some of the bigger lakes in Maine last week, and they were doing great. They got big lake trout. They got some big largemouth. They had some medium-sized pike, uh, various other species. And they said no matter where they went, they seemed to be catching fish. Uh, James Jukes checked in. He said that in New Hampshire, you know, they had about 15 inches of ice. Uh, but as you get closer to home, and he lives up on the North Shore of Mass, uh, things are, you know, thinning out a little bit. Still safe ice, but you got to be careful around the edges, he said. And um, with this storm coming, which is you know, it's going to be a warm storm, a lot of rain, a lot of wind, and high temperatures for February, you know, up into the mid-50 degree range. And that's going to have an effect on the ice. How much of an effect it has is going to depend on where you are and, you know, how thick the ice is to, to start things off. And even just how intense the rain is. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to see uh, how things go next week. So everything that I'm telling you this week about ice fishing has to be thought of, you know, or taken with a grain of salt or a little asterisk because we really don't know what the effects of the storm are going to be until after it passes. But so James is getting fish in New Hampshire um, and still had safe ice up on the North Shore in his area. Getting into interior Massachusetts, you're, you know, depending where you are, like if you're up near Boston, you're looking at six inches of ice. If you head out to, you know, the Berkshires, you might have 14, 15 inches. Um, but pretty much the entire main body of Massachusetts right now has safe ice or safe enough. And, um, you know, the only thing you're going to have to do again after the storm is just check out the edges because the edges are the first to go. I talked to Roy Leva again this week. He sent me another short video, uh, a report, and a word of caution. So let's uh, let's throw it over to him right now. Hey, Dave. We survived another week of ice fishing here in Western Mass, despite all that warm weather we had last week, um, we're probably looking at anywhere from 11 to 16 inches, depending where you're fishing. Now we do have another weather uh, low that's coming in on Thursday with a lot of rain and some really warm temps for a few days. Not sure what that's gonna do for the ice come this weekend, but I will say, um, take caution. I did have to help a guy off out of the ice this morning um, who was actually a skater who tried getting off um, close to one of the creeks that poured into the lake. Um, reminder that the edges are first to go. So if you plan to head out this weekend, bring a plank, side on caution, um, don't trust any ice, and always be careful. The fishing continues to be hot though. This is uh, reminiscent of late ice and this weekend probably had some of the best fast fish, bass fishing that I've had all weekend. And from the looks of my news feed, both on Instagram and Facebook, so did a lot of other people. 
Um, with that said, again, be careful, be safe, and get out. Because the days are numbered, and before we know it, we're going to be trout fishing open water and waiting the first arrival of striped bass this season. All right, have a good one in tight lines. Thanks, Roy. Glad this is becoming a regular thing. Hope this continues right into the open water season. Uh, always enjoy your insights. Thanks again for participating. As we head down toward the Cape, um, you know, I talked to Pete from Belson's Bait and Tackle. He's in Situate. And he said, you know, places north and west of the shop are still safe. But as you start to head east and south, it gets a little dicier. Um, he said, Plymouth, the ice is pretty questionable. Um, and when I talked to the guys from Red Top, they echoed the same thing. They said, you know, the Plymouth, Buzzards Bay, Sagamore, and then anything on the Cape, not really safe right now. Uh, a lot of open water patches, a lot of uh, just, you know, crumbly, uh, uneasy ice. But Pete from Belson said the guys are still doing well. Um, you know, again, north and west of the shop. Uh, no standout catches, but plenty of bass, lots of pickerel, good numbers of panfish, and a couple trout mixed in here and there. Out on the Cape, I talked to Ian from the Goose. He said, you know, the ice fishing season is over out there. Um, I'm not saying that there isn't some little pond out there somewhere that might have some safe ice, but uh, I wouldn't walk on any ice out there right now. And he said a lot of the bigger ponds have huge open patches. He was able to actually make some casts from the shore into some open water on one of them. And uh, no fish landed. He said he feels like a lot of those fish went deep. But he's hoping, and I'm hoping too, that the storm coming in with the change in the temperature and you know a front moving through and everything may, may inspire these fish to come out of those depths and feed a little bit closer to shore. Uh, time will tell on that. We'll check back in with him next week. But there is almost without question going to be open water options all over Cape Cod um, next time I'm on camera here. There's no saltwater reports at all in Massachusetts. Uh, so that's pretty much the story. Uh, it's ice fishing in the interior portions. And then anywhere along the coast, it's, you know, just waiting those last few days before we get some clear open water to fish. Over in Rhode Island, I didn't get a lot of, actually I didn't get any uh, freshwater reports this week. But it's safe to assume that the northern portions of Rhode Island are going to be the same as you know those interior portions of Massachusetts there's definitely safe ice there are definitely fish to be caught and um, th you know the only thing holding me back from telling you exactly how it went is just that I didn't get any reports this week uh, from that particular area uh, but the one thing that I did here in Rhode Island this week is that a lot of the charter caps gave up on the cod fishing they said it's just been too tough they've gone the few times they've gone they haven't done anything the weather's really just killed it um, then we had that warm weather, like right before the weekend last week, and a couple of the charter caps decided to go, and the rest of them said, you know, you're wasting your time. Well, guess what? You know, Murphy came in and worked a little magic, and uh, the few boats that went out crushed it. They got a lot of fish. Um, doesn't sound like there was anything of huge size, but plenty of keeper-sized codfish, some other species mixed in, and everybody caught fish and came home with fillets. So... It's just one of those things, you know, you, you wait as long as you can and then you got to make the decision on whether or not you're actually going to go. Um, a lot of guys bowed out and as is seems to always be the case, you know, when somebody decides not to go, things fire up. Hopefully this is a sign that the second half of the winter season is going to be better than the first half. Um, weather is going to play a big role in that. Um, but again, if you call ahead to any of these guys um, and just get your name on a list, when they make a trip, I'm sure that they have a protocol for notifying people that a trip's going to happen within the next few days, and you can hop on and catch your fish. And that's the story that I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Over in Connecticut, things are have stayed more or less the same. You know, the I talked to Aaron uh, Swanson, our Connecticut field editor. He spends a lot of time ice fishing. He did say, so the ice is getting a little suspect around the edges, and you definitely got to, you know... You got to pick your on and off areas and you, you, know, you got to be smart about it. But he said, you know, once you get on, you still get about a foot of ice on most of the coves on the river. And um, he feels that we'll have at least two weeks more um, left of ice fishing on the river. And the reports have been great. I didn't hear about as many pike this week, but um, the pan fishing has been phenomenal. Some big largemouth were taken. 
Um, and there's always tons of pickerel. So action is going to happen if you're on the Connecticut River. But again, you don't have to fish the Connecticut River. That's something that we all have to remember. I talk about the Connecticut River a lot. But Connecticut is just littered with productive ponds from one border to the other. Um, if you're looking for bass and pickerel, you can almost just throw a dart at the map. If you're looking for pike or trout, um, even some of these real big Seaforellin trouts that uh, trout that they uh, that they stocked recently, you can go on the deep website and look up exactly where they put them in. You can even get the numbers on how many, um, and you know you can make. Educated guesses just using technology as your guide. Uh, lots of fishing left to do on the ice, and you know, obviously, open water fishing abounds after that. Um, also, the Housatonic finally broke up. We had that rain, we had some warm weather, and it kind of shattered all that ice. And what I've heard from most of the guys that are fishing there is that finding fish is not a problem. If you're on the boat with your fish finder running, you're going to see schools of fish, but getting them to hit has been pretty tough. A um, few guys I talked to, you know, put in whole days for like three to five hits. And, uh, you know, if you're falling asleep at the switch, you're going to miss. Um, the accepted method for getting bit in the, under those conditions is just fishing real small stuff. The tiniest little paddle tails you can fish on the smallest jig heads that the current will allow. Um, and that's pretty much the protocol. Seems to be working Sort of, you know, it's, it's working for the guys who don't mind grinding it out. Um, but if you're one of the, if you're the type that can't stand to grind it out in the cold wind, you might want to wait a couple more weeks until maybe those first herrings start to show up. Then things should start to really fire up. But we'll see. This rain could also fire it up. Um, but we'll check in with everybody next week. Hopefully I'll have some news for you. Uh, another thing that happens a lot at this time of the year is that anglers get antsy. You know, we get some warm weather and everybody starts going out. You know, they start going to the tackle shop. I talked to Andrew from Fishing Factory 3. He said he wrote up more licenses on Saturday when we had that warm shot of uh, weather than he's written up since the first of the year. Um, and another thing, you know, a lot of these shops have sales at this time of the year. And J&B Tackle is holding their uh, series of used tackle sales. They just had their first one the other day. Uh, they've got another one on the 26th of this month and then another one in early April. I'm going to toss it over to my friend and colleague, Dale Nicholson. He's going to give us a little taste of how the first one went. Thanks, Dave. Dale Nicholson from the Fisherman Magazine here at JB's Used Tackle Sale. Uh, three times a year they do this sale. Unbelievable. There's something here for everybody. Today it's going on till 3 o'clock. There's another one in February and there's one more in April, guys. Again, there's something here for everybody. Come on down, say hello, do some shopping. Thanks, Dale. Looks like a lot of good stuff there. Um, and again, you know, if you're looking to get in, on, you know, to get yourself into a new setup or some, you know, some new lures or whatever, and you want to do it on the cheap, head over to JMB on the 26th. There's going to be a lot of stuff there for you guys to uh, pick through. And you know, definitely some diamonds in the rough there. So check it out. And that's the story that I have for you guys this week. Hopefully the reports helped you out. You know, again, we we have the storm coming. Things are gonna change quite a bit. So don't forget that. Definitely wanna be very careful getting on the ice after this warm weather and all this rain. Uh, but, you know, anywhere, say 15 miles from the shoreline, you know, from the sound or the, for the, or the beaches and further north, should still have plenty of safe ice, plenty of options for, for ice fishing. And if you are closer to the shoreline, I'm, I'm feeling like we've got a good shot at uh, actually finding some open water and probably being able to, you know, actually cast the line again. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, head over to the website. Lots of free content there to give you a little smorgasbord of what we offer. Um, cover the entire region from Delaware all the way up to down East Maine. We've got reports that cover that area. We have articles and videos that help you learn how, when, and where to fish those areas and cover all the species that swim in their waters, freshwater and salt. Definitely check us out. If you're still not interested, at the very least, give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Give me a like here just to make me smile. And um, click that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.
Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.